Hello to everyone and hello to Angela Day, who is one of our therapists in conversation. And today we're going to be talking just between us a little bit about what Angela does and what brought her to being who she is now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that sounds so intriguing, doesn't it? it I, hope, does. I hope I live up to the, the expectation now. Well, you see, that depends on the expectation, doesn't it? That's true. We, and we've had many conversations about expectations, haven't we? Yes. So, how did you start? What's the story of how you started? What's the story of how I started? So, my background was very analytical, very scientific, um, and I worked in many different financial um, services institutions. So, this was never on my radar in the slightest. Um, and I still remember the first time I'd ever heard about kinesiology, which is, is what I practice, was when a friend told me that she was going to go and try it. And I thought, mm, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound realistic. It doesn't sound logical. You know, all those, those kind of scientific type words of... Oh, yeah. I, um, I'm, I, the, the, I don't know if I, I, would, I would ever call myself a sceptic, but I suppose looking back at it, I probably was. Um, and she was just going through a rough patch in, in life and everything was just awful. And, and she wasn't herself. And I wasn't supportive when she told me about what she was going to go and try. Um, yeah, it, it really wasn't a supportive, open-minded friend that I would now like to think I am. Let's face it, when you're, when you're in the line of business that you were in, which is like cold mm. corporate corridors of power kind of thing. <laughs> Um, don't know about the power part, but yeah, the cold you know, corporate side had perhaps. The power in there. It was a corporate situation, so you don't, I mean, you, you just mm. don't think of things that are not tangible. No, it's, exactly. It's, the, it's very much that I have to see it to believe it. I, it has to be tangible, it has to be something that I can... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yes and no. So I was, I was heavily involved in, in youth work with the church. So I, I, I'm not completely, it's got, I've got to be able to see it, touch it, feel it. Hmm. Um, I, I do have the ability for faith and, and belief and, and things like that. But I just, the way my friend described what she was going to go and have done, I just thought that just sounds nonsense. But actually the difference in her within two or three days of having had that first session was amazing. She was, she was back to be my friend again. She wasn't this... Um, half-life effectively she wasn't she wasn't in pain she wasn't struggling and it was amazing but it was still that point of well that's great for you what would I need it for um, and about a year later I was going through some pretty challenging times in the job um, and some pretty challenging times with the with the staff I was working with and family were getting a little bit worried because I was getting a little bit stressed and and possibly the the d words coming in there as well of, of frog marched up to the doctors and all the rest of it and she just came back to me and says, right, I know you thought this was nonsense. Look at the difference it made in me. Go and try it. Here's the phone number. And I didn't get the huge big shifts that my friend got. Um, mine were much, much more subtle. And over the years, um, because I just kept going back because I felt it did make a difference in my life. And it was, it made me feel better. It made me more calm. It made me more me um and it it kind of quieted any rage or anger or or whatever else which was nice. i mean i was never violent <laughs> but i i did have angry moments um and and angry moments at myself as well so a lot of that quieted down and then a number of years after i started going and by this point i was maybe going a couple of times a year just as like a wee top up and a wee you know, like when you take your car for your MOT in the service, it felt a bit like that. I was just going for a wee check up, get, get, getting the oil checked um, and making sure everything was still in balance. And the person I, I, my practitioner said to me, oh, there's, there's some training for this happening. The only problem is it's in England. And when she told me where the training was going to happen, it actually turned out to be the same village that my aunt and uncle live in. So I was like, well, okay. Somebody's telling me this is what to do next. You need to know what happens. Absolutely. And, and the, first, the first course for me training in, in kinesiology happened um, about two weeks after I'd been given my notice for redundancy from the corporate job I was in at the time, which, to be honest, I loved the job. I really enjoyed what I was doing. Things were starting to change, though, so I probably wouldn't have continued to love the job. Um, so I did the bulk of my training um, while I was still working. And I, I started the training out 
completely out of for anyone that knows me, I'm a bit of a, an academic junkie. I, it was completely out of nosiness and completely out of, look, I could get another certificate. Um, and, and, and that was cool. I, it, was never, it was never my intention when I started the journey that this would become a big part of what my entrepreneurial life would be. I would be half of my, half of my time is going to be taken up doing therapy. So it's been yeah. really interesting. And not if you told me this is where I was going to be 10 years ago, I probably would have laughed in your face. But that's that's life though. <laughs> life. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's one of those things that we go through life with expectations and we carry the expectations of others. So, you know, good solid job where you get lots of money and you can save and you can it's secure and it's and have you know, nice holidays. Have nice holidays and do the whole thing. And then suddenly one day you look at it and you think, Yeah. This isn't really working for me anymore. Or you actually start getting physical yeah, manifestations of frustration and stress. Interestingly, the, 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 the longer period of time I spent with one organisation, so I've been made redundant twice, which, to be honest, excellent both times. But the first time I would have said, yes, absolutely. What I was doing wasn't, it didn't feed my soul. It didn't, it didn't drive me. The job I was doing when I was started the training, I actually really enjoyed the job. Mm. And actually, if, and I know things wouldn't have stayed the same, but if things had stayed the same and the team had stayed the same, I'd have quite happily continued in that role for years to come. Um, but things were changing and, and it was probably the right time to leave. So I've left with the positive thoughts of that, that part of my career. Um, and yeah, it's just... So you kind of dove right in there. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's the best way to go, though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you take it kind of step by step and kind of you know, like a little mouse, your little whiskers going and and fearful of what the next step will be, kind of yeah. hold you back. Uh huh. Because actually, by the time the job actually finished, I wasn't even at the level of being a student practitioner where I could ask for donations for my time. Um. So I was properly believing in this becoming something because I chose not to go and look for more corporate roles um, and, and actually to make this the decision that this is going to be something. Something was attracting <laughs> you that you were getting pulled in that direction. Absolutely. So what yeah. was it like having your first client? Do you know, I don't even know if I can remember my first client. Because of the way the training is done, and it's it's such intense training. I think my my first my first attempt at doing muscle response testing in the classroom was was nerve wracking, um, and and actually I think it was more nerve wracking in the classroom being watched by the teacher who's a professional oh, and knows yeah. this stuff, and and there's me thinking, am I just playing at this, or is this something I can actually do, because although I've experienced it as a client for a number of years, it's so different sitting in the chair and not on the couch and, and being watched by the rest of the class. There were six of us on the first class and we, we were all paired up and, and working in pairs. So you could hear the other conversations going, you're saying, did I make sure I said the right words? Have I done the right protocols? Is the tutor watching me? And, and it's that way as well that you're, you're speaking out loud this script effectively when you're first learning and it, have I made a mess of it have I put the intention in the right place so it was all of that rather than anything else um so when I first had my first client because because of the way the training goes you've got to have case studies yeah um and I got a couple of good friends and actually the friend that introduced me to it was one of my earliest clients as well as as for me to practice on and, and work with when which made it a little bit easier but also really daunting because she's had it done properly and had major shifts um and i suppose because because she has such big shifts when she got off the couch and just went I thought, yeah, okay, I've, I've done my job. It worked. <laughs> yeah, so it's funny that because I don't think that people who come to see us actually think about how we got to where we are and what we had to do to get there. Mm. And that, you know, 
the trepidation that they could feel. You know, is this going to work? I don't know what it is. How am I supposed to do? What's going to happen to me? Yeah. We did that when we first started as well. Mm. So we, we kind of can empathize. We can definitely empathize. With- oh, I, I, can, I can totally empathize with that. That's just a complete nonsense. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been there. Um, absolutely. And, and it is that, it's that unknown, isn't it? When you walk into the treatment room for the first time, I'd been and had a massage done before. I'd never had kinesiology. I'd never had Reiki. I don't even think at that point I even knew the word Reiki, never mind what it was. And I must admit, as we've discussed before, I'm still not completely clued into Reiki, but that's cool because that's not my, that's not the therapy I've chosen to work with. And, and it is that way of what, what's expected. So I, I do very quickly tell people you will be keeping your clothes on the whole time. So that usually yes. Oh, yes. that usually relaxes a lot of people. Um, I may expect you to take your shoes off, but that's just because you're going to climb up on a couch and it's a wee bit comfier to not be lying on a couch with your shoes on. I know there are um, people who think that we do what we do naked. <laughs> In Scotland, are you getting Jings. me? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> No, no, I, I'm, I'm very much a supporter of full clothing. <laughs> I think comfortable, loose, but, com- you know, comfortable, loose, but not falling off. So. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely clothed. <laughs> but, but it is that way that it's, you're always that little bit concerned. And I hate to use the word fear because I don't think everyone has a fear. It's just the uncertainty of the unknown. And until you've been and tried it and experienced it, you don't really know what it is. And, and no matter how many times I stand up at a networking meeting or wherever else and pitch what I do, unless you try it, you don't get it. And, and I know that because I've, I've lived that. Mm. It's um, an experiential thing. Yes. I know, I know particularly, and you will know from the experience of being in corporate situations, trying to explain to someone who is just not got that it's not wired that way to think that way that this could help them mm. they really have to be in a position where they want to come to you true absolutely and I would I would never force anyone to come and have a session um I, I do joke and say come at come at a nosiness but actually coming at a nosiness the fact that you're you're open to it means that there's something we can work with together yeah it's it's the people that are forced to go or I'm going to send you my child or I'm going to send you my husband it doesn't work. If, if you're not bought into the process, you're not going to get anything out of it because no matter how many times you tell something, some, someone something, unless they're open to accepting and open to exploring where that thought can take them. And let's face it, life is an adventure. And if you've got a dis-ease in any way, then if there's some, something or someone that can help you and make it happen. And this is why we started therapists in conversation absolutely through this, through this pandemic this micro terrorist that's come, come up across <laughs> it's more or less a case of we're all still there there are many many different types of therapy there are many many different types of therapists within that absolutely so there's somebody for everyone horses for courses mm. just because you you don't gel with someone who does one therapy doesn't mean that therapy is not necessarily going to be for you exactly and, and actually, that's what I loved about what we were, were building just now with the therapists in, in conversation, because purely because I don't know what half of the ladies on the call do in great detail. I may have heard of it. I may have possibly experienced it, but I don't really know the ins and outs of it. But I know that they get, sh- they get huge benefits for their clients and they get huge shifts for their clients. Yeah. So it's a case of you, you've got to go with what resonates for you. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's and what it's about. I'd love to think and hope that everyone would resonate with me. I know that's not the case. And, and I can only help the people that, that are interested in working with me and, and do resonate with me. And can find you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm not, I'm not, I need to be better at getting out there, don't yeah, I? <laughs> you really need to do that. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that. So how can they find you? How can they find me? So I am, I am on Facebook occasionally. Um, the company name is Inner Pathways. So the website is www.innerpathways.co.uk. So there's loads of information there. Um, I am also listed with the, the FHT, that's the Federation of Holistic Therapists. So it's one of the professional bodies I'm a part of and the Kinesiology Federation. So you can find me through there. And if I'm too far away from you, although the webcam is dead handy, I can work with anyone pretty much anywhere. 
Um, but if you want someone a bit closer, then, then those are great resources to actually go and find someone a bit closer if you're interested in trying kinesiology. And I believe that you can actually be prescribed by a GP. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So that is that's something that we're working towards and, and the the wonderful um I think it's the council or the, the board or whatever the proper name is for it for the Kinesiology Federation, they are working towards these kinds of things, yeah. So it's good because a lot of different therapies these days are actually starting to be recognised by yeah. the more traditional bodies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it would be amazing to be able to work with people before it gets to last case scenario or, or last. This is my last attempt of, of finding relief, yeah, of, of, yeah. of getting the pain to go away, of, of being able to sleep through the night, whatever the situation is. And, and people come to me as a last ditch attempt, because by the time it's a last ditch attempt, a lot more work needs to be done. Whereas yeah. if, if people find me earlier on in their, their journey through pain or disease or, or, or whatever, then then we can work easier and quicker to get improvements. So when you have someone coming to you, what kind of, what, who do you look for in a client? Not so much who, who's your perfect client because there isn't one, let's face it. Nobody is perfect. And if they were, they wouldn't be coming to us. Correct. Um, Unless they're you, taking to heart my comment about checkups. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, coming, and coming for their service. Keep, keep the service up, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. Do, you, how, do, you, how do you describe um, what someone might be dealing with that you would be able to help them with? Do you know, that's, that's such a big question because there's so many different things that, that most therapists can deal with, including kinesiology. Um, and I find... I love working with teenagers. I've been working with teenagers from a voluntary perspective, as I mentioned through the, the church aspect and, and now through different organisations. And I just love working with teenagers because they're not, the fu they're not our future, they are now. Um, yeah. And actually we need to make sure that teenagers coming through are not facing the anxiety that we're hearing about. And this situation just now isn't helping matters. No. So if I can, if I can work with, a, with teenagers who are starting to get the niggles of anxiety and the niggles of I'm not good enough or whatever it is that's going through their heads, if, if I can nip that in the bud with them now, that's awesome. That's my dream. I would love to work with loads and loads of teenagers. I don't have a huge amount of teenagers on the books, um, but the ones I do have, I feel that we're making such progress and it's, it's lovely to see the difference. Um, what you're really talking about is ramping up their potential. Absolutely. It's, it's unlocking their potential because mm. at the moment someone's put a lid on it. Yeah. And it's them or it's their schools or it's their friends or it's their TV or whatever they're doing. Um, there is, there's, there's a lid put on their potential that it's not screwed down yet. Um, I think so, that comes back to that wonderful word, expectations. Yeah. And whose expectations are you actually living down to? Yeah. 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 So, so, so that's my dream. I, I love working with kids and, and teenagers. Um, but actually working with their parents can make such a difference as well. I've, I've had a client recently who was, towards the start of lockdown, really struggling. Um, still working, wasn't furloughed unfortunately, so still working at a laptop in the house. And, and their mental health was starting to what, suffer. So that there was, there was that kind of tightness and not quite panic attacks but kind of it, I think it could have gone there mm. but because they were feeling that way their partner was picking up on that feeling so then there was arguments and it just didn't make for a happy household so a couple of sessions and and the, res the response I got back was I've been out to the shops I had to wear a mask but I've been out to the shops and this isn't and how's the relationship with the partner at home and, and the comment was we stopped arguing tension's gone and and I think because it's energy that we work with if if your energy is dark and twisty then you're going to give that dark and twisty out to other people as well and and you feed off it don't you so yeah, you feed yeah. off the energy around you and if the energy you're picking up from your partner is anger or fear or scared then you're going to pick up on res and respond to that in whatever way you're energy chooses to respond and it could be with compassion mm. or it could be with frustration 
of oh, well, don't be don't be so silly, because you've just got that that veil come down. You're not. And able also, we don't to we don't tend to have people who understand that they hold energy inside them. They when they swallow it, mm -hmm. swallow their words, or they they just I had to just hold it in. I had to hold myself in, yeah. and you see them tensing up. As they do, I had to hold myself in. I had to stop myself from saying. I had to yeah. swallow my words. And, Absolutely. You know, which then can lead to sore throats. It can then lead to sore shoulders, I'm and all the physical them. aspects yeah. that come along with it. Yeah. And people don't understand that that what they're doing is they're blocking the flow of energy. You know, they have something to say. Then, if you don't want to say it in front of the person, go out and shout it in the garden. You know. <laughs> Depends on how many neighbours you've got, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can just go out and go, ah! You know, I have a friend who used to kick a dustbin, and I didn't know how what he had against that dustbin, but he really liked it. <laughs> but still, it allowed that tension, that energy to get it's out release. and to be mm. released. And also, when you're sitting in, in, in a space, because as you know, we do a lot of space clearing, and that's got to do with the energy that's being stifled and being just left to lie. And you pick it up when you pass it. It stays there mm -hmm. and it just waits. So we have to shift, we have to move the energy and get things moving. And Absolutely. you do that by changing the energy flow in the body. Yeah, so the first thing I do with any client, once I've, once I've got their, 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 their basic thought as to what they've come to see me for which isn't always what we end up doing it just depends on what the body asks for the first thing I do is make sure the clients in, a, in, in energy balance and we use we use the, the traditional Chinese medicine meridians which is why we've got the, the doll beside me um, and and we make sure that the, their energy is balanced across their meridians because once you're in a balanced state it's giving your body a really good foundation to work from and then whatever we do on top of that you're then building onto a strong foundation because you're balanced to start with. Now I'm going to sweep around and just take you off on a tangent slightly. Uh oh. Is that, you know, <laughs> oh, you know I'm sneaky that way. I know, okay, it's, uh, know. That, that, that's why I'm not sure I should have agreed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you had to. So, <laughs> but you also do something else that is actually quite therapeutic in a way. Not just for the person who's having it done, but for you as well. <laughs> Are you talking about my other business by any chance? I might be doing that. I might be just talking about that. Just, you know, a small snapshot of what you do. Okay, so um, as well as the, the therapy business of Inner Pathways, I am also a, a brand photography specialist and I work with um, businesses and, and, and small, small companies, entrepreneurs, to get their face to be their brand. So the, the amount of people that, that are on Facebook and social, all the other social medias out there. And for me, I know the biggest challenge I've got is getting images out there and, or getting my message out there with images that tell the story. Mm -hmm. And what I do with clients is I work with them to find out, well, what is their story? And I don't, I don't use the muscle testing for it. I'm, I've, it's old fashioned pen and paper and properly thinking. And, and we come up with, well, what, what is their brand? What, what are their colors? What are their values? What's their story? What's their message? And we get really good, strong bespoke images that are on brand for their business so that they can then be putting their social media posts out. So they're not using the same photo as every other photographer, oh, sorry, every other business in their industry um, that they've used from, from a, a stock library somewhere and they're not using photos that don't quite tell their story. And it's actually um, still about energy because yeah. you're, if you're, when you're photographing and it, it, I'm thinking now about the old cultural thing where some, some peoples in the world would, would have thought that take, getting their picture taken would capture their spirit or their soul. Yeah, stealing some of their essence in their yeah, photos. Yeah, actually, when you think about it, what, we're, what you're doing is you're allowing them to show their energy. So again, you're still working with energy. You're making an energetic brand. I'm, I'm working with, their, with them and their enthusiasm and their enjoyment of what they do and their passion. And I'm capturing it in 
in, in pixels, basically. Um, and, and actually capturing memories, capturing moments, all of that kind of stuff. And I think it is, it's so important to put yourself out there. And before you tell me, yes, I know I don't do it enough, but it is so important to put yourself out there when you're, when you're working with, with growing your business. And, and and actually making sure that you stand out. Yeah. So, how do you stand out, Angela? <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm a work in progress. Um, yeah, uh, so... Come on, you can stand out. <laughs> you can put your head above the parapet right now. <laughs> Which business are we talking about? This is why I don't tend to put the two well, together. See, you, you I get so to... confused. Well, you, you... <laughs> Give yourself... A holistic thing you know you you do things for people that are energetically based and you do things for people to make them feel good about their image and their brand and their specialities yeah so do it <laughs> well the, the websites are there with contact forms on them um, so yes it's inner pathways for the therapy for the photography it's a day in your life it's with day spelled d-a-y-e for my name um, and that's dot com uh, yeah so there's there's contact forms on both places to come and find me and give me a shout we'll we'll have a call we'll have a chat if it's kinesiology you want i'm happy to talk to people and give them a little bit more of, of what what i do if, if if this isn't enough or whatever they're found online to read about isn't enough and, and with the photography as well I, I have consultation calls just to see that we are a good fit because if the energy's not right we're not going to get the best pictures this is true but also it i think that it's a good idea to to tell people due to the expectation situation that the consultation form that the consult form that they have to do before you will actually work on them is a reasonable piece of work for both businesses absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and i think that that's good because it's like due diligence you're yeah. actually taking them and you're fully gdpr yeah all my gdpr is done my privacy statements are all out there and they're about to be updated for all the, the track and trace stuff just now as well but yeah, yeah. I've absolutely we've got to follow protocol of course and and we've got to make sure that what we're doing is in the and best interest of our clients everything that you do is confidential absolutely absolutely locked boxes locked locked cupboards um and everything's kept um in in paper form so it's uh, less likely to be hackable too okay so i'm <laughs> going to stop torturing you now <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody wants to talk to angela she is very approachable she's good fun and she knows exactly what she's doing and she and i can say that from personal experience so if you are looking for someone to help you with kinesiology looking to rebalance or looking for a brand to rebalance here's your girl thank you